Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, we're, welcome to uh, Panda 2022 uh, training. So uh, before uh, we get started, I have a couple of things to uh, mention. One uh, is uh, please mute yourself during the section. Uh, we do have question and answer time. So when we have that time, you can uh, open your microphone and uh, ask questions. You can also type in uh, in the chat uh, during the training. The other thing is uh, we are going to record uh, the whole session. Uh, so uh, later, if you need, you can review it. We are going to send you a link. Uh, I know some of the people are probably from uh, Australia. That's what I heard from uh, our secretary. Um, she, she got the registration forms. Um, so I know that's the midnight right now. <laughs> um, so if, uh, if you, you need to go to bed, uh, that's okay because uh, we, we are going to have the recording uh, so you can watch it later. All right. Um, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, so today, uh, Chuan, uh, Dr. Chuan Zhang is going to uh, present um, some of the examples how we use Pandas software to do uh, alloy design. And then Dr. Shumao Liang is going to show you how we can do such calculations using Pandas software. Okay, all right, Chuan, it's your time. All right, thank you. And uh, welcome uh, everyone to today's online training class. Uh, if you had attended our Panda training class uh, before, you will find that the training class of this year is different from those of previous years. Uh, so in, as Ben mentioned, instead of step-by-step -step tutorial, today we are going to use the PPT for a few examples to demonstrate how to use Panda for error design and development. While introducing uh, these examples, we will also have a real-time demonstration to show you how to do this kind of simulations and, and how to get useful information for aiding alloy development. Since today, uh, most of today's demonstration will use multi-component database. So we do not ask you to do a hands-on exercise with us. As I mentioned, we also will record uh, this training class and upload to our website so you can watch the playback in the future. Okay, uh, let's get started. First, I will use a few slides to go through the basic information of our Panda software. So the Panda software is currently designed as an integrated workspace, which is developed uh, gradually from the original first generation to the current third generation. For the first generation of Panda software, mostly focus on the Vistagram calculation and the thermodynamic parameter optimization with the two modules, the Vistagram module and the Pan optimizer. Uh, that was before 2008. So after that, we have gradually added more modules to consider the kinetic simulations, such as the pan precipitation module for precipitation simulation and pan diffusion module for diffusion simulation. The pan solidification module for solidification simulation with considering the back diffusion effect in the solid phase. We consider these three modules as the second generation of covered simulation tools. In last year, 2021, we developed a new advanced module, the pan phase field, which for the phase field simulation, which can be considered as the third generation of the covered simulation too. So we also developed a pan sound software developer K, the SDK, which is especially designed for the convenient linkage of all panda modules of all panda modules with other software program or external materials models. So, so the Pan Panson SDK allows the user to have full access to not only the Panda software, 
but also the powerful Python data analysis and the visualization packages. So there are a few advantages of this model design of the Panda software. So for the developer, we can easily or further extend the capability of our software by adding more modules. And for users, they can learn that one software to for, perform a variety of calculations and manage the calculated results in a single workspace. So different modules, you know, you can see different modules also share the same graphical user interface. So the similar operation style of different modules makes the Panda software very user friendly and easy to learn. So you will, uh, you, you, you will learn uh, next. So the, today, the Panda training class uh, will focus on the Pan face diagram module. Uh, so please pay attention to the training class for other modules. Uh, we will, uh, we will, will be announced later. Okay. Actually, as we know, actually the, for the uh, software, uh, for the uh, Kafka Simulation 2, there are two pre-requirements. One is software, another is database. So in order to use the pan face diagram module, you also need to have proper thermodynamic database in order to calculate the face diagram and the thermodynamic properties. So at present, actually, user can also calculate the kinetic or some physical or other face properties use the pan face diagram module when you have the proper database in addition to the uh, according some dynamic database. For example, you can calculate the more volume density or some expansion coefficient or shrinkage rate using the pan face diagram module with the coupled some dynamic and more volume database. So, Actually, this here is the basic functions of the pan uh, of pan face diagram module. Actually, there are five basic functions. Uh, uh, in the pan face diagram module, the point calculation, line calculation, section calculation, and the face projection, as well as solid plane simulation. Uh, so I will briefly uh, explain these functions in the next few slides and demonstrate their applications for LO design. So this is a uh, no typical the composition temperature uh, phase diagram for the aluminum magnesium binary binary system. This we can obtain this binary uh, phase diagram use a section calculation. So actually, you can see the x axis is more fraction of magnesium, and the y axis is temperature in the unit of uh, Celsius. So which represent, uh, you can obtain the phase stability information uh, with the change of composition and temperature. But when one variant is fixed, either the composition or temperature, we can do light calculation. For example, we can fix the temperature and do light calculation to see the composition effect on the phase transformation. We can also, fix the condition and change temperature. So these are two typical type of light conditions. So if both the condition and temperature are fixed, so we can carry out a point calculation. This for the binary system. So actually for the ternary system, okay, the ternary phase diagram is a triangular uh, prism. So user can use the Panda software to calculate a 3D diagram for the ternary system, uh, which will be shown later. Okay. For easy, easy visualization, so we usually use two types of section calculations. One is the also thermal section, which cut the triangular prism horizontally at a constant temperature, and then project to the 2D uh, uh, surface. So for example, this, is the calculated also section of the aluminum, magnesium, and zinc ternary system at 500 degrees C. So one can easily obtain the composition effect 
on the feasibility of this system at, at 500 degrees C. So the other type of usable section is called isoplex, which cut the triangular prism uh, vertically at a certain dire uh, direction. So this is an example. We cut uh, the uh, uh, isoplex from the pure magnesium to aluminum zinc. So this type of section looks like a binary phase diagram, uh, as we showed previously. It shows the effect of both composition and temperature on the phase stability on this section. Here, I would like to emphasize that Panda allow users to define and calculate any sections in the multi component system. Actually, for its understanding, we use a ternary system uh, to explain the also some section and the also plan section. In fact, these two types of base diagrams are even more usable and important in multi component systems. So, in the next few slides, uh, we are going to demonstrate the useful application of these sections uh, line and the point calculation for understanding the max structure of hydrogen alloys. So actually the first example is for the application of isoplex section. Uh, we would like, uh, would like to show uh, the calculated isoplex section of this uh, uh, hydrogen alloy system. Also, we'd like to show the alloy element effect on the phase transformation at a certain temperature. And also, can use the calculator also uh, plus section to understand uh, the as cosmic structure as well. And uh, also, can use uh, the also plus uh, to uh, develop uh, of eutectic hydrogen alloy. Okay, next. I will show you these applications one by one. So actually, as one of the most popular high entropy alloy system, the aluminum, cobalt, chrome, iron, and nickel hydrogen alloys have been well studied. So one interesting research work is to investigate the aluminum effect on the maximum structure at both as cast and heavy treated standards. So this is the calculate, uh, calculated also plus of this uh, hyperbolic system. And for the X axis, it's a luminal ratio from zero to two. So at this corner, it's, it's a quartz system without, an, with, without aluminum. And for this one, it's, it's, it's uh, for the hyperbolic at this uh, composition. So the Y axis is temperature. So one can easily know the phase stability of alloys Locate at this also place at the given temperature and condition. So to investigate the luminal effect on phase transformation, so let's fix the temperature at 1100 degrees C. So along the red dashed line from left to right. So we can one can see that the single FCC fix exists at a luminal. Uh, ratio less than 0 0.3, right? it's a single axis phase region. So when the aluminum ratio greater than 1.13, so only the BCC phase max structure are stable. And in between, the FCC and the BCC phase structure coexist. So in the literature, a series, a series of uh, alloys were prepared with different aluminum ratio and had treated uh, at 1100 degrees C for 24 hours. You can refer to this literature. And for this plot, they also show a plot look like here. This plot shows the measured hardness of this heat treated alloy and the derived phase transition range. So actually you can see, as this the user showed here, this is a real uh, alloy they prepare, condition they prepare. So we can see for the FCC transition boundary, it's between 0 0.5 to 0 0.375. Uh, uh, and for the BCC based boundary, it's between 
1.0 to 1.25. Actually, you can see the predicted range and using the, this also plus are well agrees well with experimental observation. So this is, is an example to uh, use the also plus uh, to investigate the phase transition at a certain temperature. So next, I will quickly show you uh, how to use the also uh, plus to predict the as cosmic structure uh, of hyperbolas. Still, for the same uh, also plus. So in the early research, actually most of the hyperbolas are in as cast centers. So we can also use this also plus to predict uh, the as cast back structure roughly. So actually, but there are a few preconditions we need to mention here. Actually, for this alloy, you can see the melting temperature of these alloys are pretty high. And the sort of range of these alloys are very narrow. So which limited the solute redistribution. Then the as cosmic structure are mainly contain the primary phase and the minor secondary phase. So with, with these preconditions, we can uh, enlarge this is a liquid uh, involved region and uh, highlight the liquid related regions with one or two solid phases. As you can see here, the green region. Then we can roughly obtain three regions. You can see here. Actually, with the aluminum ratio less than 0 0.5, that is it's a pure, uh, could it be the single FCC. And uh, between 0 0.5 and 0 0.85, probably the FCC and BCC based uh, mixed structure can be found. When greater than 0 0.85, so may, mainly will be the BCC based phase exit in the as cosmic structure. So we can make some comparison with the experimental observations. So let's compare the predict, uh, our prediction with experimental observation. Uh, this is the literature result. They prepare a series of alloys uh, with different uh, aluminum ratio up to two. Uh, you can see here from zero at the lower, uh, so th this indicate uh, the aluminum ratio. So at the lower aluminum ratio, it means the FCC uh, phase. When the aluminum ratio is uh, 0 0.4, the you may see some uh, inter the right phases, a very small amount of fraction. So from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8, so definitely you can see a multiple, multiple, phases, multiple phases, both FCC and BCC phase. So when greater uh, from at this alloy, uh, from 0 0.9 to up to 2, actually only the BCC phase, phases are observed. This is uh, a kind of structure in the literature. So they also have a summary, uh, summary uh, uh, plot as shown here. So they indicate, uh, based on their experimental result, they summarize that the uh, uh, cosmic structure transi transition uh, for, uh, between the FCC and BCC are within the range of 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. So from here, you can see that this uh, is a predicted range and the, and the external observe, observed range uh, also agree well with each other. But here we need to emphasize that as we mentioned previously, there are few precondition for this alloy system, which allow us to roughly predict the so cosmic structure using this also so uh, also plus section. Actually, if you for more reasonable and accurate prediction of as cosmic structure, we recommend users to use our pencil prediction module, which considering the cooling rate and bank diffusion effect in solid state, which will give you more reasonable and accurate uh, result prediction. And uh, for the, the, the last example to use the uh, also class is how to uh, develop the eutetic hydrophilic. 
Actually, recently, I study of the so-called eutectic hyperboloid attract a lot of attention because they are excellent, excellent castability and fine and uniform max structure in the as cast states. So this alloy with a very high uh, strength and a good ductility. So they just combine the uh, called soft and hard base and the, uh, for the uh, very for the laminar uniform max structure. For this as a kind of as kind of structure shows very good mechanical property. So this example is one of our collaboration work to develop a novel uh, lightweight uh, eutectic hydrofluoroid with the aluminum uh, chrome, nickel, and titanium quartery system. We try, try to develop a eutectic alloy with the L21 phase, with the Hussler L21 phase, and this ordered BCC uh, phase, the two phase mixed structure. So discussion, the, the design background is beyond the scope of the train class. So here we will only show you how to design this high eutectic hydrofluoroid composition for the desirable metal structure using the calculated, uh, calculated also plus section. First, we know that the L21 phase with the aluminum, nickel, and titanium thermal system with the formula of niobium, with the uh, formula of nickel 2, aluminum 1, titanium 1. Actually, we use this phase as one component, okay? And then the B, this the BCC chrome as another, uh, as another uh, component. Then we can calculate the also, also plan section as shown here. Uh, here, it looks like a, a pseudo binary system, but this is not a real uh, pseudo binary uh, plot since uh, not all the tie lines located on this section. So here, you can see as indicated, use the red arrow and here, it's a identified uh, eutectic, eutectic composition. Actually, this may not be uh, uh, the real eutectic, but it should be very close uh, to the eutectic composition. So then the alloys at this composition were prepared and the experimental uh, investigation uh, were carry, uh, was carried out. You can see here, this is the low magnet, uh, uh, magnification image shows as cast uh, metal structure. You can see it's very clear that lamina looks, uh, looks like, uh, look like structure. Actually, we also did the uh, further investigation using TEM. You can see clearly so the uh, lamina structure of each phase and identify this is, this is BCC and this L21. So uh, actually, this is the measured uh, this composition. You can see actually for the BCC, it's a majority the uh, uh, chrome, and uh, uh, the, for for the L two one phase, is a uh, nickel uh, almost very close to the formula of nickel two aluminum one at the one. Again, actually for this alloy, you can see this is measured. Uh, the yield strength of this uh, alloys from low temperature to high temperature, and uh, the use the red uh, symbol of this alloy. You can see the alloy. Uh, this uh, exhibits much higher room and higher temperature hardness and the specific yield strength values when compared to other alloys. Okay, yeah, actually, this, this is the first example I would like to show you how to use the also place uh, to understand the phase transformation and how to guide us design the eutectic hydrofluoroid. Uh, do you have any questions here? Okay. Yeah, if no question, uh, we, we, we can move on. Actually, um, uh, we, we, in demonstration, if you have any questions, we can also uh, uh, have to, to, to discuss, okay. Okay, for the next example, I would like to show you the application of the also thermal section. It's also the section, okay. So I'd like to show you 
uh, using the uh, calculated autosome section uh, to develop the hypervaloid with desirable max structure and uh, uh, certain uh, some physical property such as such as density. So this is the calculated autosome section of the aluminum uh, cobalt chrome nickel and uh, with uh, uh, the chrome and iron component fixed at 20% atomic percent. So this is temperature also subsection is at 1000 degrees C. So you can see here uh, with the substitu substitution of nickel with, uh, with cobalt and it almost no phase, uh, no phase transformation. And the phase transformation is mainly affected by the aluminum. So if you want to, for example, uh, this is some uh, assumption, okay. We would like to design a uh, uh, high with this system with two phase metal structure because we uh, actually in the literature people found actually for the uh, single FCC uh, hyperboloid probably it's so at the, the strength is not that high, it's very ductile. So, but it, with the strengthening of other phases, such as the uh, B2 uh, phase, it can significantly improve its mechanical property. So if you want to design uh, a hydrobaloy with the FCC and the B2, two phase max structure, actually for the P B2 as a precipitation phase, okay. So if you want to see, show this phase at the minus seven degree C and with the 20% of chrome and iron individually, okay, exactly. So also some section what we calculate here, right? So this is base region as highlighted here. We can we, we can choose error condition within this base region. Give us right. So actually, for this one, we want to the phase fraction of the axis phase locate at a range of zero point five to zero point nine. But for 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 this region. Right now we can only see there are two phases, but we don't know their fraction. So, but we can superimpose the calculated contour line of the FCC fraction in the same diagram as shown here. The red line is the fraction of the FCC phase. From here, the fraction of this phase is one. Here is 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, and to, to zero, right? So, if you want to meet this requirement, so this is region we can choose as shown here. If we also want the design alloy with lower density, such as less than seven, so we can also superimpose the calculated density control line in the same plot. As you can show here, the green line is a calculated uh, density control line. Actually, from here, uh, density is 7, uh, 7.1, 7 7.2. So, if the density uh, less than 7, this region is uh, alloys. Uh, it's, it's what we need to, to choose. So, here you can see step by step, uh, this region can meet all these uh, three criteria for the alloy design. So this is all one uh, useful application of the autosomal uh, section we would like to show you here. Uh, any questions here? All right. Okay, let's move on. So the for the for the last one, uh, for the last example, uh, uh, I would like to show, previously we already show, already show you the useful application of the uh, also plus section and the also some section. So the next example, I will show you the light calculation. For the light calculation, as we mentioned previously, there are two types of light calculations in general. One is peak temperature and change composition. So the right figure 
as a, this, this we already know this is a also flat section, right? So for the right figure, as shown, the line can create a result of this uh, hyperplanoid at 1100 degrees C. Previously, already know the phase transformation range uh, at this temperature. But from here, one can see uh, the transition, the fraction of each phase changed with alumni ratio. So based on the line calculation, one can obtain more quantitative information in the line calculation than the qualitative information shown in the also plus section. Actually, you can see here in the concrete result, uh, this green line is the FCC. The blue line is B2 and the red line is BCC. So based on this information, we can roughly know the phase transforming range as well. It's very clear as well, right? So next, I will show another type of line completion with fixed composition and, and change temperature. Still, uh, uh, this also plus, let's fix the line completion. Actually, uh, this type of completion is fixed completion uh, and the change temperature. So this can create a result uh, with a lunar ratio at 0 0.7. So for this calculation, you can see the x axis is temperature and the y axis is the phase fraction. So one can see not only the stability range of each phase, but also their fraction within this phase at different temperature. For example, you can see here with change temperature, if you fix temperature as a temperature, you know what kind of phases will be stable and what are their fractions. So for, the, for this LOS, okay, we also uh, did further experimental investigation to verify our thermodynamic calculation. So actually for, for this one is a optical image of this alloy aged at 1200 degree, uh, 1250 degrees C for 50 hours. Based on the calculation as shown here, you can see at this temperature, there are three phases are uh, coexisting. This is a, a optical image of this alloy after heat period at, five, at 50 uh, hours. So one can see that the big uh, bright, this is the primary FCC, right? Uh, during preparation, you can see the FCC phase, the blue line, will, which will form first, okay? We also see the small bright FCC phase and the dark B2 phase in this region as shown here, okay, in this region as shown here. So we, so after heat treated this alloy for longer time, for one thousand hour, at the same temperature, we can see that this uh, max structure is more closer, more close uh, to, to the equilibrium status, which also indicate the kinetic evolution of this alloy system is very sluggish, you know, even at such a high temperature. So we can expect for the same series of alloys treated at relative lower temperatures will take even longer time to reach equilibrium. So you may realize uh, the discrepancy between the, the line can create the result, which will have three phases, but based on the experimental observation, right now we only have C2 phases, right? Actually, we also did the uh, atomic probe analysis. You can hear this is for the FCC phase region. That's very uniform. But at the B2, the, the dark phase region, you can see there are, see, there are we do see the phase uh, decomposition. And the uh, blue is a, represents chrome with the chromium rich phase. That is the disordered BCC. So in, actually in this big region, that does, it's not a single B2, it should be the BCC plus B2, two phases. So which you can see uh, based on the uh, concrete result, it will be very useful to help us understand the phase equilibrium 
uh, information. So uh, next, I'd like to show you the useful application of the point information. As mentioned previously, the thermal dynamic configuration is very useful for help to understand the phase stability information uh, within uh, uh, within the hyper alloy system, right? So this is a point configuration result with a aluminum ratio at 0 0.3 at 700 degrees C. So you can see there are three phases are stable at this temperature for this alloy. The majority axis phase, that is about 70%. Uh, this is the uh, alloy composition. And the B2 phase, this is an aluminum and nickel rich phase with a fraction around uh, 16%. And the sigma phase, the, the sigma phase is a cruel cobalt and iron rich phase and its function is about 14%. So this is the SEM image, shows the gray axis phase and the dark B2 phase. And the measure composition uh, using the APT uh, between the FCC and the B2, you can see here. And for this is the B2 phase, that is aluminum and the nickel rich phase. And this is the composition of the FCC phase. So this, this is a metal competition uh, very well with uh, some kind of uh, prediction. Actually, we also use APT and uh, we do find the sigma phase. And the metal competition of the sigma phase is about 52% uh, of crown and, uh, uh, and the cobalt cool Iron is about, about 23. So this also agree uh, well with our some kind of calculation. But here you can see the fraction of the signal phase is very uh, very low. Here we with the uh, we need to emphasize okay, as we know and the kinetics of the sigma phase formation is very slow. And the diffusion kinetics of this alloy, as we mentioned previously, is also relatively low, even at a high temperature at 1250 degrees C, right? So this alloy, we heat treated at this 700 degrees C for 500 hours. So this alloy may not uh, reach fully equilibrium yet. So this could explain why the predicted uh, fraction of the sigma phase uh, is different from uh, experimental observation. Okay, here I think uh, we already uh, sh sh uh, show you uh, the uh, applications of the section calculation, line calculation, and point calculation. Uh, actually, for next, uh, I think uh, Dr. Uh, Somo Liang will uh, show you some live demonstration and how to uh, calculate uh, uh, those space diagram as we uh, mentioned uh, previously. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, that, we can have more discussion. Okay. Before that, uh, I think uh, because uh, China already used uh, some iso plaso sections, some uh, iso -SOM sections, line calculations, point calculations to demonstrate how we can uh, use such calculations to understand uh, the microstructure, the experimentally observed the microstructure and uh, so on information. So that such calculation will help you uh, uh, to aid uh, um, the alloy design development, right? Um, before uh, Sumo uh, perform uh, all the calculations to uh, demonstrate how we can perform such calculations, are there any questions? I think uh, let's give a couple minutes for question time, question okay. answers. Any 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 questions so far? Uh, yes, uh, I have one question. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, uh, good. Uh, for the issues, uh, prediction based on the composition and uh, temperatures. Uh, 
and also you show the mass structure evolution by age time. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to learn the software. Software can give the prediction based on time development. Oh, that uh, that part we are going to um, have another training for like kinetic modules. Uh, for example, pan precipitation module, pan diffusion module, solidification module. But this uh, training class, we are going to focus on phase diagram module. So that's for uh, equilibrium calculation. So please uh, pay attention to our announcement in the future. Next couple of weeks, next couple of months, we are going to perform uh, uh, training for other modules as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I see another question here from the uh, chat. We will see examples of how phase diagram calculation can be altered by experimental input. Example, we experimentally observe phase that isn't pre pre present. Oh, so this question, I think the question is, uh, can we, uh, um, altered, you know, the calculation can be altered by experimental input. So basically the question is uh, sometimes the experimental observation uh, is different from the predicted phase equilibrium. So what we'll do is uh, for such situation. Well, for this, can we predict using, uh, can we, uh, predict uh, calculation, non-equilibrium calculation. Well, yeah, um, I think uh, this, um, there are uh, several different situations for this, right? Sometimes uh, trying to already demonstrate if your experiments, like uh, your annealing time is not, not long enough, probably you do not observe the real equilibrium phase. Sometimes you may observe some metastable phases there, which are easy to form than the real stable phase. And then so you, you think, okay, the prediction is wrong, but actually probably this is because the annealing time is not long enough. So if you do a long enough annealing time, probably you will see the real stable phase. And of, of course, sometimes uh, <clears throat> sometimes the thermodynamic databases need to be improved. Sometimes if the prediction is uh, not consistent with the experimental observation, we also need to uh, investigate the thermodynamic database. For the line calculation, we can certainly uh, predict non-equilibrium condition if you know some of the phases are not stable, we can suspend those phases. But if you are talking about kinetic effect, then again, we need, we, we need to use uh, kinetic model, modules to do the simulation. Okay, so Chuan, do you have any other comments? Uh, yeah, actually I think uh, for this last, uh, last two questions are kind of related, right? As Ben mentioned, Actually, if your uh, observation, uh, observation is in the metastable status, now actually for the phase diagram condition, it's in the equilibrium status, so may cause this discrepancy. The other reason is if, you know, actually if your experimental observation shows some phases that we didn't predict in the uh, uh, some of that calculation, uh, which may cause by the yeah, accurate uh, some of that database, which needed to be further improved. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's move on. Uh, I, next session, uh, Dr. <coughs> Sumao Liang is going to present how we can perform such calculations uh, using Pandas software, okay? Okay, hello everyone. Yeah, thank you for attending this training class. Uh, my name is uh, Sumao Liang. And now I'm going to demonstrate how to use Panda software to do uh, the calculations, which the, the information presented by Dr. Zhang. 
And here, I'm going to use this high entropy alloys as an example to do the following calculations. The isoplate section, isothermal section with the contour lines, and the two types of line calculations and the point calculation. So now let's go to Panda software. And in Panda, uh, we start a calculation. First, we need to create a workspace. Click this file, create a new workspace. And here you can see uh, it contains six modules in Panda. Now, it, we are using these different modules. We can do different types of simulations and the calculations. But in this training class, we are only focused on pan-phase diagram module. So we select this pan-phase diagram and click OK. Yeah. Then here we see this, we created a default workspace. And here we can uh, rename the name of this project by right click, rename. We can rename it as face diagram. And the high entropy. So after we create a workspace, the next step is to load a database. We can use this T icon or go to the menu databases, node TDB or PDB. Oh. Yes, we need to find the uh, database which we are using. Now I, I put this database in this folder. And uh, we select the uh, HEA database and open. Here, this window shows and the uh, to select components. The left column lists all the available components in this database. We can snake this one by one, click one and use this small arrow to select to the right side. We can also hold the control key and snake the other components. Like this example, we hold the control key and snake all four elements and then click OK. So after the database is loaded, we see here the TDB viewer shows the information of this database. This, the element, it contains 19 elements in this database. And this is the information of the species and the information of the faces. So this TDB viewer shows the general information of this database. After the database is loaded, we see this uh, toolbar become highlighted and activated. Those are the functions for phase diagram calculation. The first one is the point calculation. This is line calculation, section calculation, projection, and the certification. So for the section calculation, we can use this toolbar. And we can also go to the pan phase diagram menu. Here, we can select the section calculation. So this window shows us uh, for setting conditions of this section calculation. We need to set the condition of this original point, X point and the Y point. So these three point corresponding, if we see this uh, asosome section, that three point corresponding to these uh, three point are on this asosome section. The original point is here at 800 degrees C. And the X point at here with the uh, composition is two more of aluminum. Okay, the Y point at here is 
1600 degrees C. So we also see here, the composition of uh, this section is using more and the X axis is aluminum ratio. Now we go back to um, Panda software. We see here now the unit of Panda is weight percent. We need to change the unit of the composition at more. Here has an option button. Click this option button, we can change the unit of the uh, conditions. For the composition, we set the unit at more. And then click OK. OK. Here we see the composition, the unit of the composition changed to more. So now we first set the condition of the original point, which is zero more of aluminum and one more of all the other four components. And the temperature is 800 degrees C. After we set in the conditions of this original point, we can easily copy this condition to the X point by click this small arrow, okay, here. Now, for the X point, we only need to change the composition of the aluminum to two more. And we can also copy the original point condition to the Y point. Click this icon and then change the temperature to 1600 uh, degrees C. So after all the conditions are setting, then we click OK to perform this calculation. OK, this is a five component system and the calculation takes about uh, one minute. And with the overhead of loading and the output data and the graphs, so it did takes a little bit longer. Now we can see this is a calculated phase diagram and all the data are saved in these tables. But we notice here, the x-axis is a, a more fraction of aluminum, not aluminum ratio. So we want to use the aluminum ratio at the x-axis. So we need to do a simple Algebra transfer, transform this aluminum uh, more fraction to aluminum ratio, okay? And if we go to this phase diagram, we see this is aluminum ratio and these are the uh, number of moles. And we know the more fraction of aluminum equal to uh, more, more of aluminum divided by the total more of all components and do a simple calculation, transformation, then we can get this uh, function. So in Pandat, we can also very easy to do these simple uh, mass uh, calculations and to use these quantities as a uh, data to plot this phase diagram using aluminum ratio at the x axis, okay? So now we need to go back to Panda to add a new table to use the aluminum ratio as a quantity to click on table, right click, add 
new table. This is a table editor. The left column here shows all the commonly used properties. And if it is here, then we can simply drag like this temperature, we can simply drag and drop on the right side to output this data. And for the aluminum ratio, it is not a common used property. So we need to tap in here for four multiply X aluminum and divided by one minus X aluminum. Here we can also select from the uh, options. Okay, then click OK. So here we can see a new table named as generated is uh, created. And this is the aluminum ratio data. And to plot a new graph using this data, we first select uh, the aluminum ratio and then hold the control key to select the temperature. In Pandat, when we plot graph from the data, the first selected column is the X axis. And the, the columns uh, after hold the control key will be the Y axis, okay? After select this data, we go to table, create a graph. Now we can see a new graph is created with this uh, aluminum ratio as the X, X axis. So now this diagram is shown here. We can edit the appearance of uh, this diagram to look um, to looks better. Okay. So double click here, and we can change the title to aluminum ratio. And we can change the scale of the graph by here in this property window. Here, we can change the scale from zero to the maximum value is two, and then the increment at 0 0.2. You can see here the axis the increment and the minimum value and the maximum value here. Okay, and similarly the for the Y increment, we can set it at 100. Now, if you like, you can also add grid here to show major grid to set at true or uh, minor grid to set at true. So in this property window, you can edit the appearance of uh, this phase diagram. After uh, setting the scale and uh, the text, now we can label the phase regions. In graph, click label, and then click on the phase region on this phase diagram, okay? Then it will labeled the name of each phase regions. And we can label most of those uh, phase regions and by simply click on the phase regions. Like these two phase regions, they're close to each other. We can also move them to a better place and select and move. Okay. So, and later, then we can add a uh, line or arrow to indicate to these phase regions. Here from this graph, arrow at or line, and then we can add a line here. We can also use this toolbar, add arrow or line to add this line here. Okay, here, we can also edit the text of these neighbors. For example, we want to use a Greek symbol for this sigma. Double click 
and now to see them. If you click this small A icon, a syntax we shown here, this is for the Greek uh, letters for the sigma corresponding to S in Greek letters. So click OK. Here we see the sigma shows as Greek symbols. We can also change all the other sigma faces. and move it. Okay. Now, this phase diagram is calculated and properly labeled. So we want to use this diagram for publication. How do we export this to graph or use it in WordFile? It's very simple in Pandas. Right click, Snake export. Now, here you can save this file to different types of graph format file. Okay. And if you want to use in, in a Word document, it is even easier. You can only need to right click, copy, and then open a Word doc and paste. Then you, you will see the face diagram is pasted on here. And in Pandad, the graph in the Word file is a vector graph. You can enlarge it and it will still be very clear. Okay. So, That is, we can output these graphs. In Pandad, we have another function is to uh, make user can view and save the conditions after the calculation, okay? If you put your mouse here, you can simply see the calculation condition from here. But if you right click, there is an option to view condition and the batch file. Click open. This is the batch file for um, Panda. In Panda, the batch file is used a, a simple XML format, and it can be uh, easily opened and edited in any uh, text edit. Okay, but in Panda, the, the this keyword will be highlighted, and here. I want to inter give a short introduction of, about this batch file. The first here is the calculation name and the calculation type, which we use is a section. The next here is the database information. This is the database what I use. And below are the units. Here for the composition, we use more. And next, these are five components, what we selected. For the faces here, the, this star means all faces. This means all the faces have entered in this calculation. And below are the conditions of those three points, what we said from the interface. The, the first point here, corresponding to the Y point. This is a 1600 degree C and the composition of aluminum is zero. And the second point is the original point on the interface. So 800 degree C with zero more of aluminum. And the third point is the Y point, uh, the, the X point. This is the second is the original point. The third is the X point. Okay, this aluminum is two more. And below are the output informations. These are tables. And we can see this is the generated table which we generated for the aluminum ratio here. And not are the output of the graphs, 
This is a generated graph which we use the aluminum ratio as the x-axis and the temperature as the y-axis. So now that is the uh, calculations for this isosome section. We know in Pandat, we first need to create a workspace by using here. And here you select proper module and to create a workspace. And then we need to node a database using this node database and select the database. And then we do calculations, set section, set the calculation conditions. Okay, especially we have to pay, pay attention about the unit. And after that, we got a default graph, which is the, the, the x-axis is not what we wanted. So we add a new table, this table to output this uh, aluminum ratio data and then plot this phase diagram using the aluminum ratio data. So that's all for this uh, isosome section. Before I move into demonstrate how to do isosome section, do you have any questions about this part? I see uh, a question popped in in the, uh, in the chat section says, I'm wondering if we could get the database from your homepage, or we need to set up one on, your, on our own. What? How we can set database and image file type. Okay. So if you know how to develop a thermodynamic database, you can develop a TDB format database. You can use your own database. And uh, uh, we do provide, uh, you know, uh, we do provide a demo version of Pandit with some uh, binary and ternary uh, database, which, is, which are in TDB format. But for a uh, commercial database, um, you need to uh, purchase it. You like you need to license from us. Does that answer your question? And yes, I can add a little bit more. Is at the end of the demonstration, I will show you our help uh, resources. And actually, here, if you open our Panda help. Open Panda example book pass, and then you will open a folder here. This is installed in your uh, software, and th in this folder it contains uh, several open source database which used in our example book, and those database and the batch file and all the uh, TAD uh, files will help you to develop database or uh, set conditions. Yeah, the other question is, uh, is the background of the graph white or transparent? And I think China already answered it, it's, yeah. uh, it's white, okay? All right. Okay, if no more, okay. let's, let's move on. Yeah, so now let's move on for isosome section calculation. Yeah, first, I will demonstrate how to do this simple uh, isosome section. And later, I will show how to add the contour lines on these isosome sections. We see these isosome sections also contains three points which co corresponding to the three point in Pandat section calculation. So this point is the uh, original point. And uh, it, yeah, it, this is a, this isosome section is a five component isosome section with chromium and iron as a constant uh, composition of 20 atomic percent. And the nickel, cobalt, aluminum are the other components. So we see the original point is 60, 
percent of nickel, and the X point is sixty percent of cobalt, and the Y point is sixty percent of aluminum, and the temperature is one thousand degrees C. Okay. Now let's go to Panda here. We start section calculation again, and here we see the unit is more. But for this isosome section, the unit is atomic percent. So we need to change the unit from here to atomic percent. Yeah. But now I want to show another method to note conditions. So I keep this here. And here we have a condition is node condition. Okay, if we click this node condition, here we have a batch file. That is what I introduced for the acid plus section. So we, we can select this acid, uh, so much batch file is what are prepared before the calculation. Okay, so then we open okay. this. And here we can see the calculations from that batch file is noted on here, and the unit becomes atomic percent, and the uh, composition of uh, chromium and iron is 20 in all three points, and the original point is 60% of nickel, the X point is 60% of cobalt, and the Y point is 60% of aluminum. Okay, now if we have a prepared batch file, then we only need to load the condition. Then we can click OK to start the calculation. During the calculation, I think uh, I saw a question here. It says, um, uh, I have uh, some challenge after running the calculation, the save the results file. When I reopen the saved file, I can only see the results, but couldn't continue to work on the saved project. How can I overcome this challenge? Uh, basically, I think Jun already, Jun Zhu already answered the question. You need to reload the database before you can do any calculations. That answered your question? Okay. okay. Uh, the other question is yeah. how can we create batch files? So after the calculation, you can save the uh, calculation condition that's automatically saved as a batch file. Yeah, that, uh, but anyway, that, let's uh, let's let uh, let's uh, let uh, Soma continue, and then now uh, we will answer the question together. Okay. Okay. Yeah. First, I can yeah simply answer that one question is how to save the conditions. Like the the last example, we reviewed the the, the calculations, and the here right click, then we can save the condition. The that is. Is it very easy to save the condition that is for the previous as a place calculation. Okay, so then that is the easiest way. After you do the calculation, then you can save the condition as a batch file. So that is that the is easiest, easy. easiest way to uh, get, get batch file. Okay, now we see this is the uh, calculated as a some section because this is a five component. Uh, section. So the default is plot as a rectangular. Here we want to change to a triangular plot. You need to find here this in this property window the triangular plot. Now it is false. So we click this and select two. Then it will uh, change to this triangular Tri plot. So this is the uh, typical isosome section. Okay, so now I want to introduce is another advanced feature. 
is to add the uh, contour lines on this isosome section. Okay, so I go back to section calculation, and this is a section calculation, the composition and the temperature. Here we have a button of the, shows the contour lines. Click this. We want to add the density and the phase fraction contour lines. Select density, add, and here we set the condition is from seven to eight with step 0 0.2. And then we can also add the contour line of the phase fraction. Here, this star means all phases, but we only need to calculate the FCC phase. Then we can simply delete that star and type in the FCC from here. Then click OK. And then click OK to start the uh, contour line calculations. OK. And here I want to mention is uh, I select the density calculation because the database, what I choose, contains the more volume database. So because density is uh, uh, some, uh, some physical properties. So if you do these calculations, after that you follow these instructions. So you have to make sure your, the database you use contains the more volume data or use the commercial Pandat more volume database. Yeah, this calculation, because we have several uh, contour lines, it may take two to three minutes. And yes, we can also answer several questions before. Yeah, I, I think uh, I want to... I want to answer this uh, question from uh, Abhisak. I do not know if I, I pronounce your name right. Uh, so I think Jun already answered your question. Right. Basically, basically um, after the calculation, you save the workspace, but that workspace only saved the, the calculated results. And you can share the calculated results with other people who do not have the database. So that's why uh, after you open it, if you want to continue to do more calculations, you need to reload the database. Otherwise there is no database in the saved workspace. So you cannot do any further calculation. I just want to make sure you understand this answer. So just uh, uh, give a response uh, if you understand it, and then uh, we can move on. Yeah, okay. So I move on. So this is the calculated as some section with the uh, contour lines. We first change to triangular plot, click this two from here. And now this is the, uh, the typical isosome section. We first add legend to show the meaning of different lines from graph, add legend. Click on the uh, face diagram here. And then we show the blue lines are the phase boundaries. The red lines are the density control lines, and the green lines are the FCC green uh, control lines. Okay, this is the calculated result. And if at the first, if you think it's a little bit messy, too difficult to understand, you want to delete one type of uh, control line, you can simply 
click and select this green line here and then delete it. Now you can see we delete the FCC uh, control lines and only show the uh, density line. Okay, if you put the codes on this green line, or on this red line, you see the density value here and press F2, it will add the density value on the face diagram. Okay, like this. So now we can also label the face regions by using this labeling function. This air off from graph label to label these face regions. And here we see this is pure FCC and these two face regions is FCC together with other phases. Now we want to see the uh, phase fraction of the FCC phase. Now the lines, the control lines are de deleted from this graph, but the data are still saved in tables. Here, the contour F FCC is the table of the contour lines, okay? And if we open this uh, section, this graph, and we want to add the contour line back to this graph again, you can first open this graph and click once on this table, click once, and then this property window where it shows the uh, table columns in this uh, table file. So here we can simply select the code and drag and drop on this graph. Here you see a hint, adding column at X axis for plot and release, and then select the aluminum and hold the control key and release on this. Now you can see the uh, control line of the FCC phase is added again. So now these are the calculations for the isosome section. Uh, do you have any questions about this as a sum section together with the contour line calculations? If not, then I will move on to the next demonstration of line calculations. For the line calculations, we can use this is a function for line calculation or from this menu, select line calculation. Here shows the window for line calculation condition setting. We only need to set the composition and the temperature of the start point and the end point. Theoretically, we can do any types of line calculations. Uh, but for bed analysis, as described by Dr. Chuan, we normally set uh, two types of line calculations. One is fixed the temperature and change composition. And the second is fixed composition, change temperature. So my first example, we'll be using this as a fixed temperature change composition at 1100 degrees C. So the composition is from a zero more of aluminum, this quaternary alloy to this uh, quinary alloy contains two more of aluminum. And this is a calculated result shown here. Okay, now we go back to this non calculation, select this option to change the unit from atomic percent to more again, click okay. And then we can set the condition, the beginning, the start point as one more of the other four component and the temperature is 1100 
degree C, and then select copy the condition to the right, and change the composition of the aluminum to two. Okay. Now this is the calculations for this non calculation. After the calculation, we see here, yes, the x axis is, is the more fraction as well. So we can do what we did for the other place section, and we can add table and uh, then plot data from that table to use the aluminum ratio at the x axis. But like this example, we know the uh, aluminum ratio is what we need. And in Panda, the default plot is the more fraction of aluminum. So if, if we all know this information before the calculations, we have another option is we set the extra table and the extra graph when we set in the calculation conditions. Now I will show you how to do that. Click this non-calculation again. Here, this is the non-calculation conditions. But after the calculation, we got this uh, more fraction at the x-axis. What we need is the aluminum ratio at the x-axis. So here, we have extra output. Click extra output. Here, has a table. This is the default table data, we can add an extra, click this add. And here, now we know the Y is the uh, first fraction of each faces. Okay, we see here, the F at X showing the first fraction of each faces. We simply drag and drop to the right side and then we here, we can also tap in the uh, aluminum ratio. Four multiply X axis and divide it by one minus X aluminum. Click OK. So now we have generated an extra table for this aluminum ratio data. Then we click this graph and add a new graph. This is the default. We need to select the generated table here from the table source. And then choose this aluminum ratio at the X axis and the phase fraction of each phase as Y axis, then click OK and OK. After setting this extra output, click OK. Now we see this diagram showing the X axis is aluminum ratio. Okay, we can change it to aluminum ratio. And also change the scale here to two and 0 0.2. Now we show this. And at last, we add the legend to show the meaning of those phases. From graph legend, click here. And we know the blue line is the BCC phase, the red line is, is the B2 phase, the red line is the BCC phase, and the green line is the FCC phase. So this is the for first type of non-calculation, which fix temperature and change composition. For the, for the second type of non-calculation, which is fixed composition and change temperature. 
if we see this condition, it is at 0 0.7 more of aluminum from 800 degrees C to 1600 degrees C. Okay, it is very similar to the previous one. And then we go back to here to select non calculation. And the aluminum composition for the start point is 0 0.7. And the temperature is 800 degrees C. And then we copy the condition of the start point to this end point and change the temperature to 1600 degrees C. Then click OK to do the calculations. This is the calculated result showing and the relationship of each phase at a different temperature. Okay, then we add the legend from graph legend. So, yeah, so that's all for these two types of non calculations. Yeah. Do you have any questions about the non calculation? Okay, now I'll give the last present, uh, demonstration about this part one is the point calculation. We, to calculate uh, this alloy with 0 0.3 more of aluminum at uh, 700 degrees C. And this is a calculated result. Here for non-calculation, we can use this uh, toolbar outcome for line cal uh, po point calculation. Here we say the uh, aluminum composition is 0 0.3 and the composition of other elements is one more, temperature 700 degrees C. Then click OK. Here shows the result of the non calculation. In the first part, it shows the uh, result of the system property, it shows the temperature, pressure, and the composition of this alloy. And those are the partial properties of each element. And these are the uh, integral properties of this uh, alloy system, the Gibbs energy, enthalpy, entropy, and heat capacity. In this database, we contains more volume and more volume database. So here we have more volume and the density and result. Below are the information of these three stable phases. This is the composition of the FCC phase. Here is the phase fraction and the uh, property of this phase, of the FCC phase. And also have the more volume and density property of FCC phase. Yes, and the next is BCC phase, uh, B2 phase. And the last is the sigma phase. Here we see the sigma phase. This is just the uh, sub lattice information of the sigma phase. It has three sub lattice and uh, all five components. Uh, are included in the first and third subletters, and the second subletters is occupied completely by this uh, chromium. Okay, so this are the uh, introduction about the point calculation. Yeah, so that's all for the first part of demonstration.